What's up guys and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm gonna show you the 3D photo effect. This is one of my favorites. I've used it in music videos, in client work and I love to bring static photos alive. This is a super cool effect which you can just recreate step by step. I'm gonna show you all the details. So let's dive right in. So first of all, you have to choose the photo. I just looked up a 4K wallpaper, Travis Scott, and we're gonna create a new folder and name it, in my case, 3D Photo Effects. So here we go. And the first step is open up Photoshop Beater. If you don't have Photoshop Beater, go to your creative cloud and make sure you download it because we're gonna use AI tools so we can create a long camera motion. Open it up, create a new file. So for the width, I'm gonna take 7,000 pixels and for the height, 7,000 pixels as well. And also we can transform it easily to a 16 by 9 ratio when our base photo has a 1 by 1 ratio. So you can just copy these settings. We're gonna call it base 1, 2, perfect. So now we have a blank page in Photoshop Beta. And the next step is importing our photo. Just drag it in. And now we're gonna select our photo by pressing Command on the keyboard and click on the frame. And now we want to invert the selection. And now we've selected all this white area with just a few clicks. And now we can create a new layer and choose generative fill. And now we can describe how we want to extend the frame. So in my case, we want a concert stage and click generate. This one is looking pretty good. And to make everything clean, we just export the picture now by file, export, PNG, and go into our folder. We call this new folder export, and then we choose a base. PNG. Yeah. That's all we need. We're saving the picture right now. Let's open up this picture in a new tab. So choose it, open up the picture. What we want to do is select our subject. So we have to create two layers now. One with only the subject as a PNG and one background, just clean without our subject in it. So we can animate a 3D camera. To select the subject, just choose the object selection tool and then we just click on Travis and it should create a good selection. Um, but there's still some parts I want to fix. So we are changing quick selection tool. And now if we hover over it here, we're gonna select the areas. If you press option, you can deselect areas. Perfect, so I'm happy with the selection. And now we just click on the little icon down here and it says layer mask. So boom, so we have our subject. So go to file, export, quick export as uh, PNG. And this one we call one by one subject. Perfect. One last step before we jump into After Effects is creating the clean plate. And I made experience to use the Adobe Firefly web feature. So I recommend you just uploading your uh, one by one base plate here, choosing the remove option and then select your subject uh, with, with the paintbrush and then click remove, wait a couple of seconds and boom, our subject just disappeared. If you're not happy, just click on the more option and it's gonna generate three more options for you which you can choose from. Nice, so we have three more options right here. This one is awesome, so I'm just downloading it. I'm gonna rename it to one by one clean plate and move it into our free photo effect folder so we don't mess things up. And yes, it's time to start in After Effects. So we are ready, we got all the layers set, create a new project in After Effects with Command S. Now with Command I, we import our layers first. What we need here is we need our clean plate for sure. We also we need our subject and now make sure to save it as uh, the 3D photo effect and you can create a new folder, just call it After Effects so things don't get confused. Hey, let's create first of all the comp and the composition defines the aspect ratio and the working area we're working in in the next steps. I want the video to be in a 16 by 9 ratio. Well, let's take it four seconds, you set the duration here. Uh, we're gonna go with a frame rate of 25 frames. That's totally good. Click OK and that's our comp. So let's import our PNGs. Boom, we need to uh, scale it down a little bit. Yes, this is looking good. We can move the clean plate to the back and scale it even up a little bit. So we are matching the rim. And now the first thing you want to do is select both layers and choose toggle switches if you don't see the 3D layer option. And we're gonna make 3D layers out of them. And now we can rotate them and move them in 3D space. 
So now let's create a 3D camera. Go here to new and choose camera. These settings work for me and now nothing happens. We have to create an animation next. So let's choose our subjects and the subject we can drag a little bit forward and the clean plate a little bit back. And to have a better view and work with 3D spaces, I recommend you choosing the two views and the two views are super helpful. So you can choose the window by clicking inside. And then here I would choose the active camera on the left screen, I like that. And on the right screen, well, let's go for the left view. So in space, we have a left view now. And now choosing the camera, we can actually move forward and backward, which is super helpful. And I recommend selecting the layers here, zooming out a bit, and now you see this is our subject layer and this is our clean plate layer. Just by clicking on it, you see which layer is where in space. So let's move the clean plate even further back in 3D space. And then we need to scale it up a little bit so it matches everything. And now when we click on our camera and move it forward, we see we have our first animation. So now we're gonna animate our camera motion. And for that, just open up the camera options here, go to transform and keyframe the point of interest and the position and choose the starting position where you want to start. And I think the black border, so we're scaling up the background a little, perfect. And then over time, we want to go in with our camera, creating the camera motion, moving up in position, moving down the point of interest. This is looking cool already. And to smooth things, we can just choose the keyframes here and go into the graph editor and choose the yellow dot and create this kind of ramp. Yeah, so we're smoothing the keyframe. We're now going in slowly, slowly and go up and go down again. So this makes a big difference. So you see we go super smooth in make it even more organic. We're gonna create a little camera shake and for this create a null object, I just call it shake and the rotation. We want to click on this stopwatch here while pressing option on the keyboard to bring up the expression. And for the expression, uh, we want to have wiggle, open brackets and maybe go 10 comma 10. And then we need this camera to parent with the shake layer so the camera layer actually gets affected by our null object and now yes we have the motion so let's go in into wiggle and by changing these parameters um, you are actually impacting the duration like how many times a second it should shake and how impactful the shake is so yeah let's let's play around with the numbers here yeah this is already looking pretty cool right and now let's add some text i think it looks pretty cool to have another element in 3d space and text so let's go in and type in travis scott boom let's choose this font this is looking cool making it a little bit bigger and also create a 3d layer so you can place this in 3d space and we see here the layer is in 3d space let's move it a little bit back maybe and let's see the animation yeah it's not too bad and to spice up the effect even more i recommend you downloading the free plugin saber it's amazing uh, not just for this effect i use it really a lot we can create energy outline, fire outline effects, and yeah, pimp up our text even more. So make sure to download uh, the Saber tool, link in the description, it's for free, install it and jump back into After Effects. Create a new uh, solid and the solid we call Saber, perfect. And let's search for the effect Saber, we have it on. So, and from here on, you want to open up the customized core. On the customized core, you choose text layer and for text layer you choose Travis Scott or whatever text layer you have perfect and now go to render settings and choose here for composition settings choose transparent so we don't have a black background uh, now we can also transform it into a 3d layer so we can place it in 3d space and turn off the regular text layer we have created we don't need it anymore because we have our saber effect and from here you can choose between different presets and these presets look super cool yeah like this electric i think right away that's fitting our style but i think fire look match this better here so we choose an orange color but yeah but let's change it like that to edit everything you need to go back into the text layer and actually edit the text layer 
we t I just turned it on again and back here. Yeah, this is better. And we can actually make the text come in pretty cool. So it's not there from the beginning. And to create a cool animation, make sure you select the saber tool, go here into end offset under customize core, click the stopwatch and press U on your layer to bring up the, the keyframes. And let's say here, want the end offset for zero. And now, boom, it's coming in. And we can even smooth this again by, yeah, making the, the ramps really clean. Make sure the keyframe is selected and choose the graph. Go in, boom, this is nice. And we can do even a little bit more, bring up the camera keyframes here with you again. And maybe let's go slowly out. So we are back here in our window. We're pretty much in and let's go back out again at the end. Move down. Yes, this is cool. So we go in and go out again. Let's also edit this, this keyframes, smooth them. So we are cool and good to go. Make sure we are at zero at the end. Yeah, I think this, this keyframes work for us. So we go in, stick there for a second and go back out. Yeah, I think that's cool. But we can even make it look cooler by adding some particles, some fire sparks. So I just downloaded this stock footage from Artgrid. A link in the description, super cool stock footage, but you can also get it on YouTube or where. Just download it and drag it into your composition. So let's name it fire sparks. Choose, select the layer, select the layer and choose screen. Boom, yes, this is looking spicy, hot. The next thing we want to do is add a small color grade so everything fits better together. Call it color, boom, and search for the effect Lumetri color. And here, let's go into the basic correction. Uh, let's add a little bit of contrast to everything. Bring down the highlights a little. Yeah, play around what works for you. And the last step to finish things up is to create a new adjustment layer again. And we call this blur focus to create more focus on our subject. We are searching for the camera lens blur. Yes, add it here. The blur radius, maybe something like 10. 10 works for me, I think. Choose the ellipse tool up here. Make sure again your layer is selected and draw an ellipse around the area in the middle. Go to the mask options, invert and masked feather. So we feather out the mask a bit and now the edges are blurred. So the focus is more in the center of the frame. Yes, and we can also add here on the blur focus another effect, lumetri color, basic correction and lower the exposure by maybe 1.5. So we even have more focus into the middle of the frame. Yes, guys, and that's it. We've just created a super dope animation. And yeah, just by having this photo, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you have learned something cool today. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of these tutorials. I'm super excited to go detailed into effects and explain them to you. Make sure to comment. Let me know what we can do better, what effects you want to see in the next tutorials. Thanks guys and I see you in the next one.